Leadership and the New World Many say that globalization is coming to an end, or at least slowing down. However, while overall international trade value is decreasing, overall international trade volume is actually increasing as new trading routes and partnerships are forming. There are also partnerships, or at minimum sympathies, forming on both the right and left of the political spectrum that are crossing traditionally recognized international borders. Again, I would refer to my previous article, Coalitions and Alliances Crossing Over Borders in Our New World. A link to this video is provided at the end of this video. I encourage you to read and listen to this article, as well as like, subscribe, or download one of my many free ebooks. I believe there are loosely agreed upon unofficial coalitions or alliances of understandings forming on both of what some would call the right and left of the political spectrum, very loosely connected in a variety of ways on all sides. Loosely unofficial and understood understandings of support between peoples across what are traditional borders of countries or areas. These understandings of support could be considered loosely formed alliances or at minimum sympathies. I believe groups around the world are coalescing and finding sympathies across borders just as objects floating on water might be attracted to each other. Yes, they are disorganized, and it could be explained more as a division of the world into various groupings and beliefs across what could be considered traditional borders. They could also be considered more of mutual interests forming coalitions or loosely connected sympathies. They may be far too disorganized, but you could think of them as the beginning of the 21st century version of the Allies and the Axis that do not abide by or do not completely follow geographical borders. It is inevitable as the world becomes figuratively smaller. There will be some form of a one world system of administration somewhere or somehow in the future. However, at our current status, as a one common world becomes more inevitable in our modern age, I sometimes find this prospect uncomfortable. What will be in the future is up to us and how we act now. A one world, whatever that may be, does not have to be world dominating, but unfortunately it appears this has the probability of becoming the course. But nonetheless, I believe the state of the world is riper for conditions resulting in new worldwide conflicts that are less defined by traditional national borders and could result in the circumstances where a world authority could potentially be more generally palatable for all sides of the political spectrum. Maybe not a government in the traditional sense, but something else. Yes, as we grow as a world, some form of world authority or world supervisory might be unavoidable in the future, whether we want it or not. Unfortunately, those who are making the biggest strides on both the right and left may not have everyone's best interests or practical policies in mind. I am not particularly a fan of those current influencers of world politics that are both on the right or left of the political spectrum. I also believe we need to be wary of both extreme sides of the political spectrum. I have also come to the opinion that the role of the global economy has been tainted with ideological extremes and self-serving alliances increasingly devoid of capitalistic or socialistic morals. As the prospect of a one world becomes increasingly inevitable, the question is who will be in charge? What kind of world do we want? What will be respected? Will the few or the many be in charge? Because if we want it to be the many, we better agree on something and damn quick. So long as we remain divided 
and we fight among ourselves for what little scraps are left. They got us by the short hair. The truth is, no one or authority has the right to decide the fate of the one world society. No one individual or group of individuals has the authority to rule alone. Until even the least informed of us are informed of how and why others that live far away do, a world authority will never be fair and beneficial for all. How can we ever expect things to change when we ourselves refuse to because of personal inconveniences? How can we expect others to change and grow unless we ourselves are willing to take the first few steps, the first little sacrifice? Change does not necessarily mean drastic chaos. It can mean adjustable steps. But it just has to be enough to initiate more change and the rest will follow. We are all pieces of the puzzle interlocked and interdependent on each other. Someday, perhaps, we may outgrow the need for what some would call a government. As we are better able to govern ourselves, we may not need the presence of a formal government. Hopefully, someday, we will be at the point that there will be no use for a government, but in this present day and age, there is still a need for some form of a government. At our present stage, we should not eliminate the concept of the governmental or institutional. I believe that institutional systems can be very helpful. However, I just believe in certain instances they have become corrupted and they do not reflect the true mindsets, thoughts, and emotions of their people. We still need to have limits until all peoples of the world learn to live in true peace, togetherness, and mutual respect. But let the limits be controlled by the people, not the limits controlling the people. So, as long as there is a need for government, we must not only be very aware of discontent among its peoples, but we must also be aware of any law or laws that take away freedoms from some people and give it to others. Many of these laws that are put into place will cause much discontent among its peoples. This, in turn, will cause political unrest and the potential fall of that government. Unfortunately, from the perspective of many people within the more various democratic governments in the world, their representatives are failing and becoming corrupt. Of course, on a side note, it should be said that the more authoritarian governments of the world seem to be even more incompetent, corrupt, or all of the above. But nevertheless, it seems that within the representative governments of the world, the representatives appear by their people no longer voting for the will of their own people but their own. Throughout history, there has been mistrust in leadership or government and obviously in many instances, this has accumulated in the downfall of that leadership or government. But unless it is by imagination, it seems trust in governments throughout the world, whether democratic or authoritarian, seems to be increasingly fading. Unless it is my imagination, it seems mistrust or at minimum the belief of government incompetence or corruption throughout the world has been increasing for many years. And this phenomena, in varying degrees, is not specifically isolated to one government or political group within that government. Unfortunately, the general discontentment or specific issues have not been heard by many of those governmental institutions. And unfortunately, it may also be too late for many before these concerns are truly heard. I remember a short but very intense conversation I once had with a 70-something-year-old woman while campaigning door-to-door -door in the early 2000s for Idaho State Senate. We talked about the state of the country and how it has lost respect for its people and how the government does not respect the little people and how the majority is no longer respected. 
One particular issue that upset her was that Congress has the gall to give themselves a raise in the middle of a recession. She said, "It's the little people that get screwed." This statement was a sad truth then, and still is a sad truth now. Except now, the general discontentment with governmental policies throughout the world seems to be more publicly visible and violent. It is sad, but as the world is right now, to live in the world of the living is to sometimes survive. Unfortunately, in today's world, it seems that only those who get ahead are those who take advantage of the weakness of others. I ask. How can we ever expect things to change when we tell our children one thing and continually do another? How can our children ever believe that walking on the backs of others is wrong when those who do seem to get the most rewards? She went on to say, "There's going to be a war in this country." That being my native the United States of America back in the early 2000s, and how she hoped that she would not live to see it. When a society or government, for that matter, No longer has its citizens' trust or concerns in mind, then that government becomes a threat to the people. And perhaps, so far, the only saving grace to wars within the various nations of the world, along with international wars between nations and groups, has been that the alternatives are worse. To me, it is disturbing that the main avoidance of war is something worse. What I mean by this is that in many cases throughout history, revolution, obviously not all, has been spurred by the search for something better. Whether it was truly for the better or not, it was presented to those who participated as such. Also, in the past, there has been the general avoidance of war because of the unproductive, destructive nature of war. But now the avoidance is not only because of our new abilities for destruction and carnage, but because what is thought by most people to replace that incompetent or corrupt government might be worse. People will eventually resist anything that is imposed or believed to be detrimental to them, even if in reality it is not. It is also always more prudent for the survival of a nation to keep its citizens content. To do this, it is better to seek out and find what people really think. We must ask ourselves where humanity is and where our societies, world, and ourselves are going. I say, if we are going to have a representative government, the least we can do is make it more representative. Has the time of heroes passed? Even if it has, we are going to have to wake up. And stop being frightened or drawn into our own comfortability, like a frog in slowly boiling water. Many of us can feel that something is going to happen, and it needs to be dealt with before it becomes too late. We cannot ignore it any longer. We are going to have to take control of our society's path while we still can. Those that make the big difference, good and bad, are the ones that are not only fed up. With their societies, but can think in the abstract. There are those few that are at the right place and time, with the relevant background in life, to take on that specific challenge. Whether they are for the good or bad, in many cases, depends on the conditions of the society in which they were brought up, treated, and how they chose to deal with it. There are also those that were born with that spark or particular something. In many cases. They would have never been known, but on occasion, circumstances will ignite that spark. I have always wondered how much of the ignition of that spark was truly by chance, but we can never really know for one hundred percent certainty. So, are those significant leaders born or made? I believe it is a combination of both. This is why there is a justifiable concern on all sides to prevent what we would consider those bad actors from becoming ignited. And again, I hope you enjoyed this. If so, please consider a like, subscription to this channel, or a visit to one of my other recordings. And thank you again for your time.